In this video, we're going to talk about how to reconcile and how to read uh, 277 files. This video is brought to you by the EDI Claim Reconciler, part of the EDI Power Tool Suite from EMS. And to understand the 277 file itself, uh, we're going to talk about it in the context of the claim adjudication process and the steps of uh, billing between trading partners, the acknowledgments received, the status acknowledgments, and uh, the remittance process. I'm going to do that by walking you through the uh, steps that started with the HIPAA standard, uh, the 4010 version of the HIPAA standard uh, that came into play in the early 2000s. Uh, and we refer to that affectionately as the good old days. Uh, not quite as old as when you got paper in the mail, however, but the good old days of healthcare electronic processing where a provider would uh, produce a claim in their billing system and they would transmit that claim to a payer in what's called an 837 healthcare claims file. It's a format, it's an electronic file containing all the claims. Payer would then receive this file electronically and send back um, an acknowledgement that a file has been received. And that's basically your step one in the process. Uh, once they've received the file, they have to verify whether or not this file can be processed. So it goes through a structure validation process. And the results of that validation are communicated on another file called a 997. And that's a functional acknowledgement file that says, yes, we can process this file. It is structurally correct. Or, I'm sorry, your file is not structurally, uh, structurally uh, correct. So we are rejecting the file. That's your step two. For files that uh, are structurally correct, they go into the adjudication system, your step three here. Uh, where the claims are adjudicated against the benefit rules, um, against the fee schedules, et cetera, et cetera. And at some point later, usually um, many days, sometimes weeks later, in the old days it was a uh, much longer uh, cycle, uh, the payer would communicate back the results of the adjudication on an 835 remittance file, where of course everything was denied. Well, not necessarily true, sometimes they're paid. Um, the 5010 standard came around in 2014, uh, it's an increase in the, the versioning, uh, but something else changed as well. Uh, we still have uh, the same two, uh, first two steps are the same, uh, where the uh, file is received and acknowledged, but there's a new step three that was introduced by CMS. Now this is not actually part of the HIPAA legislation, it's not required that payers follow this uh, extra step here I'm about to show, but many do. In fact, I would say probably the vast majority of payers out there are in fact um, subscribing to this uh, new step three, which is a pre-validation step. So before claims are submitted into the adjudication system, where it takes several weeks to get a response back to a provider, uh, this pre-validation uh, process provides some basic edits, some basic validations on the file. Is this even our member? Should we even be sending this to adjudication? Uh, we require certain pieces of information in certain fields in our files. Are they all there? Identifying numbers or what have you. And this uh, is communicated back to a trading partner or provider in this case on a 277CA file. And that is a claim acknowledgement file. And a couple of things uh, about that, first of all, uh, it does not contain whether or not a claim is going to be paid, uh, a denial per se, like we have with a remittance. This contains accepts and rejects. It's filed, the claims have been accepted or the claims have been rejected. And the second part is it's almost immediately that you get this response. You know, usually it, so some payers are real time or pretty close to real time. Some have a few hour turnaround. The most uh, we've ever witnessed is a 24 hour turnaround. So instead of waiting weeks and weeks to find out, um, whether or not your claims are going to be processed, um, you're finding out almost immediately you're able to rebill in a lot of cases and your cash flow uh, can improve. And then those that are passed, that pass the pre-validation, do go into the final step, uh, which is um, final adjudication. Um, doesn't mean it's going to get paid, it just means it's going to get passed through and hopefully paid. So the two fundamental uh, uh, differences um, in a 277 where there's a rejection in an 835 when there is a denial. Now a denial has been 
um, denied for cause. I'm not, I, the payer, I'm not going to pay this claim for some reason relating to the benefit rules. A 277 claim status, on the other hand, isn't even processed. It's thrown right in the garbage. So in most cases, you don't even know about it once it's past this stage here. So you're not going to find a, um, this, this claim uh, in most cases later on through denial. So the questions you should be asking in the billing process is, are, um, A, were all my claims received by my uh, trading partner? Did they all make it into adjudication? And if they did not make it into adjudication, how do I know and how can I rebuild them or fix them or send them to the correct payer or what have you? And the answer can be found in this very important file, the 277CA Healthcare Claim Acknowledgement File. And it looks something like this. Maybe you submitted seven claims and you should get back um, a one-for-one one file in most cases. So if you submit one 837 claims file with seven claims in it, you should get one 277 in most cases. And it might look something like this where your claims one, two, four, six, and seven have been accepted and are going to be passed into adjudication. Claim number three was rejected and it is thrown in the garbage. Uh, and claim number five is missing, which of course um, brings up the age-old question, WTF, where's this file? Uh, that is a reconciliation process. That is something that should be done uh, and it, it's very beneficial to you, the provider, um, to do this reconciliation. So there are a couple of different kinds of 277 and you may see them both uh, because it's not governed by uh, the legislation. There is a little bit of variation. We have the 277 proper and the 277CA. They are exactly the same except they are completely and totally different. Uh, both are a form of status acknowledgement for claims that have been submitted. Now, uh, the 277 proper, uh, if you will, is a health uh, care claim status response file. And the operative word there is response. It's payer generated and it's in response to a uh, claims inquiry that is that are submitted from a provider and they submit that on another EDI file called the 276. So they're asking um, what is the status of these specific claims. So it's solicited. And the response answers only what was inquired about. And furthermore, it in most cases tells you only about claims that are already in the adjudication process. So it's a different place uh, in our steps. Now the 277CA is a healthcare claim acknowledgement. It's a different point in the process. It is payer generated also, but it's unsolicited. You don't have to ask for this if you're uh, if your trading partner uh, participates in this process, you will get it unsolicited. And it answers what was submitted on an 837 on a file by file and a claim by claim basis. And it tells you about claims that will or will not pass into the adjudication process. Uh, these files, all these files we're talking about, are EDI files. They are, uh, EDI stands for Electronic Data Interchange, a format uh, that has been in uh, operation probably since the 50s if I'm not mistaken it, uh, during mainframe computing in its early uh, life in the insurance industry uh, industry I believe uh, these are text files you can look at them in any text editor they are not encrypted in any way I mean uh, trading partners may choose to encrypt files when they transmit them or store them encrypted but the files themselves are not meant to be encrypted they can have any naming convention or any file extension and because of that, you can open them up with any text editor. In fact, you can open them up with Microsoft Word even, um, although I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's actually not bad if you're going to look at the file, but uh, certainly don't try to do any editing with a, uh, a formatting tool like Microsoft Word or the like. All right, let's talk about reading them a little bit. In order to read what is inside of these 835, or I'm sorry, 277 files, or these EDI files in general, you have to understand how they're built, and it's a very complex process, and it's guided by what they call the technical reports by the ASC organization, International Standards Organization. The specific number for the two, uh, 277CA is the X214 under 5010. These are uh, purchased through the Washington Publishing Company. Uh, they're not cheap, they're expensive, but they're also very comprehensive. Uh, we don't have uh, time to cover it in this video here, but we do talk about a little bit how to get through uh, some of the loops and segments in an EDI file. If you look at our video uh, titled How to Read an 835 Electronic Remittance, we do a little bit of that looping and segmenting. 
Um, but let's talk about this in a more higher example here. Let's suppose we've opened up with uh, a file with our editor and we've pulled out, um, so we've identified claims, we've identified um, the claim number one, two, three has a status of rejected. It has a claim status category of A8, and it has a claim status code of 116. And we knew where to look for them because we have that technical guide in front of us. Um, the uh, A8, the category A is an acknowledgement, and the A8 specifically is an acknowledgement of a claim that has been rejected for a relational field being an error, just sort of a generic um, error message. So that 116 uh, is the rejection type, if you will, and that tells us, and this is again uh, the source of these are the Washington Publishing Company who publish all the HIPAA standard codes. Uh, this, this claim was submitted to an incorrect payer. So what do we know now? We know that claim number 123 was in fact rejected. It's not going to go into adjudication in most cases, and it won't uh, appear on a remittance later in most cases. And we also know the reason it was rejected. In this case, it was uh, a wrong payer. So basically, you've sent uh, a subscriber to the wrong payer. Uh, there can be multiple reasons. It doesn't have to be just one. And you can see um, uh, each and every reason something uh, was rejected based on those codes that are put on the claim itself. So to reconcile that, you kind of got to go through all of those. And there's things you want to do, first of all, to do a proper reconciliation. You want to make sure that you're not just seeing your rejects, but you're also seeing uh, the claims that are missing altogether. And believe it or not, this still does happen quite a bit. So you make a list of all your claims on a given 837 file that has been sent out. You can do it on paper or back of a napkin. Obviously, a spreadsheet is a very useful tool. And what you want to do is, is kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison claim by claim. So find the 277 file that corresponds. It should be one-to-one. -one. Sometimes it's a many-to-one, but in the vast majority of cases, you'll get one file per one file. Open it up in your text editor. Go through the same uh, steps we went through a second ago. Find each claim and note each claim that has a rejection, but also note any claims that are missing. And with the rejections, note the corresponding reasons. And then basically, you're checking them off the list as you address them. So you're going down and you're working, working the claims, if you will. And when you're all said and done, you should have a nice list, uh, to, you know, something like the red light, green light type approach, where all the red ones are the ones we need to go back and rework. And also, the most of the, you know, it seems pretty fundamental, of course, but the the one thing that is often overlooked is the no response. Things things do get lost, they get dropped. You know, there's bugs in the system. Uh, out there, and those are very important too. What you don't know uh, comes back to bite you. So what you end up is something like this: healthcare claims on one side, your statuses or acknowledgments on the other side, and you're looking for the holes, basically, the re the rejects or the reds or the, uh, the the claims that have not been responded to after a reasonable amount of time. Um, that's uh, certainly doable by hand. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hunting, hunting and pecking and such. But you can also uh, take a look at our EDI Claim Reconciler, and we'll show you how it does that very same process, very easy. And if you follow the, the link, uh, we can uh, walk you through a short uh, demo of the EDI Claim Reconciler. Thanks for watching. Feel free to call or visit anytime.